Hi, and welcome to lesson one of our new topic, quantitative chemistry. Today we'll follow the same routine as last lesson. If you don't have everything you need, pause the video and do this now. So, retrieval practice slide one, pause and have a go. And these are the answers. If you need to pause and note down any, please do this now. Next retrieval practice slide, pause and have a go. And these are the answers. If you need to pause and note down any, please do that now. And the last retrieval practice slide, pause and have a go. And these are the answers. If you need to pause and note down any, please do this now. We are now going to move on to focus on balancing equations. To do this, you will need to access the resources on Show My Homework. If you haven't done so already, pause the video and get yourself organised. OK, so our first question today is this. What does the conservation of mass in a chemical reaction mean? So, in a chemical reaction, no atoms are created or destroyed. So, no atoms created or destroyed. Essentially, everything I have before is going to be there at the end. Now, we're going to have a look today at balancing equations, which is a really good way of showing this idea of conservation of mass. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at chemical formula. So my first chemical formula is going to be this. N Two. N, as you all know from your last topic, represents nitrogen. Now, this little two here, this tells me that I have two nitrogen atoms that are bonded together. So if I was to draw this, it would look something like this. I would have two nitrogen atoms bonded together. Now, these two things show exactly the same thing. They're just showing it in a slightly different way. Here, I've written N2, and here, I've just drawn it. But they are exactly the same thing. Now, let's do another example. H2O, something you should be familiar with, water. So this tells me H, hydrogen, I've got two of them this little two tells me, but I've only got one oxygen because there's no number after the oxygen, so it's just one. So if I was to draw that, I would have one hydrogen, two hydrogen and oxygen. And it's as simple as that. Obviously, it might not look like that in reality, but for this purpose, it's absolutely fine for you to draw it like that. Now, what I would like you to do is I want you to pause the video now and I would like you to have a go at these three. So, NH3, CH4 and O2. So, please pause the video and do those now. Right, so hopefully you've had a go at those now. Let's go over the answers. So NH3, you should have got one nitrogen and three hydrogens. So something like that. CH4, hopefully you got one carbon and then one, two, three, four hydrogens. 
And lastly, O2, you should have got simply 2O, 2 oxygen. Now I want to go back to look at what happens if I was to add a number in front of the chemical formula. So let's go back to my original example, which was N2. And when we drew that, it looked something like that. Now, what if I was to put a 3 in front of the N2? Well, all I've done there is said that I've got three lots of N2. So if I was to draw that, it would now look like that. I've got three separate lots of N2. Now notice I've not put them all together because I've I started with just N2, so I've got three separate lots now. Let's do one more example. Let's go back to H2O. Again, we drew that as hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen. Now, let's imagine now that I actually have four lots of H2O. So now I would draw HHO, another one, HHO, another one, HHO, making sure they don't all touch, remember, HHO. So now I have four lots of H2O. One, two, three, four. What I'd like you to do now is pause the video and I want you to draw the following. I'd like you to draw two H2O2 and three Cl2. So pause the video and do this now. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at that now. So the answer for this one, so firstly, I I draw H, H, O, O, but remembering I want two lots of it, so underneath I'm just going to draw that again. This one, three lots of Cl2, first one is going to be Cl, Cl, but remembering this time I want three lots of Cl2. So Cl, Cl, that's two, and then my last one will look like that. Now, let's look at how we can use this idea to help us balance equations. So let's start with a really simple equation. I'll take hydrogen, H2, plus oxygen, O2, to make H2O, water. Now I'm going to start by drawing myself a line underneath the arrow because this helps me to separate out the reactants, this is what goes into the chemical reaction, and the products, what I make or what comes out of the chemical reactions. Now I'm going to draw the chemical formula just like we have been doing. So H2 I draw as H. H. Oxygen, I draw as O, O, and H2O, two hydrogens, and an oxygen. Now, I can see that this chemical reaction isn't quite balanced, because here I've got two hydrogens on this side, and I've got two hydrogens that side. Perfect, that's the same amount. But here I've got two oxygens this side and only one oxygen on this side. Now that can't happen. As we said at the start of this lesson, we cannot create or destroy atoms in a chemical reaction. So if I had two oxygens at the start, I physically have to have two oxygens at the end. Now some of you might be there going, well just draw another one on, but I can't do that because that completely changes um, what's made. So instead I have to, what we call, balance this. 
So, I'm going to start by drawing a box around each of the chemical reactants and products here. Now, these boxes help to remind me that I can only add a complete box. I cannot break a box apart and take bits that I want and leave bits I don't. I can't make the box any bigger. I can only deal with what I've got in front of me. So, my hydrogens are all balanced, that's fine. Let's have a go at balancing my oxygens. Well, I've got two on this side and only one on this side. So to be able to get the two I need, I'm going to have to draw another one. But remember, I have to draw the complete box. So I now have two oxygens here and two there. Brilliant. However, by doing that, I've also created myself a second problem. And that is that I now have two hydrogens this side, but one, two, three, four that side. So to get from two to four, I'm going to draw myself another box of hydrogen. And now I have one, two, three, four hydrogens. One, two, three, four. Perfect. One, two oxygens. One, two oxygens. So that is now completely balanced. Now, and finally, I count up the boxes. So I've got one, two. So I've got two hydrogen boxes. I've got one oxygen box. And I've got one, two water boxes. And then I just add the chemical formula in front. So I had two H2 boxes plus one O2 box. And that made two H2O boxes. Now, absolute last step is to rewrite this, but getting rid of the ones, because just like in maths, they're kind of irrelevant here when we're looking at formula. So I would write 2H2 plus O2 makes 2H2O. And that is now a balanced equation. OK, let's do another example, but using the exact same method. So let's take um, N2 plus H2 to make NH3. So I'm going to start exactly the same. I'm going to draw myself my line to separate my reactants and products. Then I'm going to draw my chemical formula. So N2 n n plus h2 h h makes n h3 so one n nitrogen and three h hydrogen so it'll look something like that now i'm going to put them in boxes to remind me that i cannot alter the box i have to add a complete box now, I can see I've got two nitrogens here, but only one over here. And I've got two hydrogens here and three here. Well, I'm going to go with the nitrogen first, because I can quite clearly see that if I've got two here and only one here, if I add one more box, I'm completely set with this. So let's do that. N, H, H, H. And put that in a box. So now I've got two nitrogens on each side. But my hydrogen is still not done. I've only got two here and I've now got one, two, three, four, five, six on this side. Well, let's add another one. H, H. Well, I've now gone from two to four, but I need six. So I'm going to need to add one more box of hydrogen. And that now gives me six on each side. So I've got one, two, nitrogen, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, hydrogen, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Just like before, I count up my boxes. 
So I have one box of nitrogen, three boxes of hydrogen, and two boxes of NH3. Then bring my formula down. So one N2 plus three H2 makes two NH3. Finally, I write it again, not including that one. So it becomes N2 plus 3H2 makes 2NH3. Okay, what I'd like you to do now is have a go at one yourself. So I'd like you to have a go at Na plus F2 makes NAF. What I'd like you to do is pause the video, have a go at it, and then press play once you've had a go, and you will see me running through the answer. So, pause and have a go. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at that now. Now, the correct answer that you should have got was 2Na plus F2 makes 2 NAF. So hopefully you started by drawing your Na plus F2, so F and F, and then you had NAF, so Na and F. Now hopefully you saw that the Na was balanced at this time but the F wasn't and so by putting a new box remember to put them in boxes by putting in a new box of N A F that now balanced the F on both sides however it created a new problem with the N A and so we would have needed to add another box of Na. And then by adding up our boxes, we had 2, 1 and 2. So it's 2Na plus 1F2 will make 2NAF. And then remember to rewrite it, getting rid of the 1. So 2Na plus F2 makes 2NAF. We have now come to the part of the lesson where you need to embed the knowledge covered today. You should do this by first self-testing and then if you want to move by to peer testing by asking someone at home to quiz you, you can do that. Please pause the video and do this now. Finally, it's time for you to have a go at some practice questions. The slot questions are attached to show my homework, but if you're unable to access them, they will appear at the end of the video. Please ensure these questions are completed ready for next lesson. Thanks for tuning in.